Today we're joined by two leading change makers. We're talking about an extremely critical issue about preventing gun violence. And I'm joined by leading change makers in this space. And I'd love to introduce them to you now. So I'll say hello to them, both these wonderful gentlemen who are joining me here. And we say welcome to Dan, who's joining us, who's actually really the president of the Brady Campaign and the Center for Preventing Gun Violence. And we also have Jess Cagle, who's the editorial director of The People and Weekly Entertainment Magazine. So it's great to have you both here. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks, great thanks for having us. Here. Yeah, and you're talking about this fantastic topic today. You've got a big event on this evening. Yeah. Dan, why don't you introduce the Brady Campaign to our audience? I mean, the Brady Campaign is a leading national effort focused on really what is one of the biggest issues in the U.S., an issue that claims the lives of 90 people in our country every single day, the issue of gun violence. And the reality is that this is a bitter partisan political debate in the halls of Congress and the halls of state houses across our country, but it's not a bitter partisan debate among the American public. More than 90% of the American public agrees with the policies that we can put in place, like expanding Brady background checks to all gun sales, agrees that convicted violent criminals, domestic abusers, the dangerously mentally ill shouldn't have unfettered access to guns. And so we focus on solutions like that uh, to really prevent the gun violence that's happening. You know, we all hear a lot about terror attacks, and we hear a lot about the mass shootings that happen in our country, but the reality is a tragedy of epic proportions happens every single day, and the other reality is there's something that we can do about it. We can do something by engaging the voice of the overwhelming majority of Americans that are already on our side, already agree with us, and that's why this organization exists. Amazing, and you're hoping to cut gun deaths in America by half by 2025. And tonight you've got the Bear Brady Awards, and Jess is winning an award. Why did you choose Jess to receive this honor, Dan? Um, well, you said it. Jess, uh, Jess Cagle is a change maker. Um, you know, we've always said that this issue uh, will change when it's not just the usual suspects like me. I have uh, experienced a personal tragedy. Um, I, I know what it's like to get a call saying that a loved one has, has been shot. Um, I'm president of the oldest gun violence prevention organization in the country and the, and the most successful one, uh, people expect to hear it from me. Uh, they don't expect to hear it from the editor-in-chief of one of the leading magazines in our country. Um, so it's so important that we hear from um, people like Jess Cagle, the celebrities that he's helped to engage, to really lead the way, create the change, and show that this is an issue that doesn't belong in the kind of corners of some partisan political debate, but really belongs right out there in the open on the cover of People magazine. Completely, and I've seen those covers, Jess. And from your perspective, you know, People magazine is known for its entertainment, celebrity, pop culture, human stories. Sexiest man alive. Sexiest yeah. man alive today we're seeing Drain the Rock Johnson. <laughs> been, a, been an interesting day of media. There's this, yeah. there's Sexiest Man Alive. Yeah, yeah. And, and when you're doing all that, do you feel it was a tough decision for you to take a stand for something that some readers may be alienated by? It started really only a year ago when people got involved in this issue, and it, there was a mass shooting in uh, just just near Roseburg, Oregon, and nine people were killed at a community college. And I don't know at that point in time there there was a feeling of hopelessness around these mass shootings because it seemed like there was one every week, and you know every time. The, every time one of these things would happen, the president would say the same thing, and certain people in Congress would say the same thing, and the media would say the same thing. And I remember when Roseburg happened, we kind of deployed our forces at People magazine to start interviewing the loved ones of those people who had been killed, and we would tell the stories of the fallen on our site and in our magazine, and it just seemed so useless. You know, here we are putting human faces on this tragedy and yet nothing ever changes and, and guns are still so easy to get by these, by these you know, madmen who want to do so many people harm. And so um, I turned on the television that night and I saw President Obama about to speak about this tragedy and I rolled my eyes thinking, oh, he's going to say the same thing he always says, and then nothing's going to be done. And what he said was, I'm going to say the same thing I always say, and nothing's going to be done. And he called out himself, he called out Congress, and he called out the media. 
And I thought, I took the challenge. And um, a great group of employees that, that, that I work with took the challenge too, to say, what can we do differently this time? And so what we did that time in print and online was we not only covered the story and we, we told the stories of those people who had been killed in this mass shooting, but we also published the, the, num the, the contact information for all 535 members of Congress saying to our readers, call your representative. D tell them that they have to do something and they have to take this seriously and let's let reasonable voices be heard. And um, it was not really that big a deal, I didn't think, because after all, 93% of the population agrees that we need to do something about gun violence. Now, I knew that when we did it, we would hear from that tiny, vocal minority of people who says, you can't even discuss gun violence prevention. We're going to prohibit even the discussion of it. I knew we would hear from them, but I thought everybody else is going to be so happy that we have provided this public service. Everyone's going to be thrilled that we're making it so easy for people to contact their representatives. And that was so not the case. I mean, a lot of people were happy that we did it. However, that tiny vocal minority is so much more vicious right, if you haven't interacted with them before, they are really scary, right? And I was also shocked at the media's response to this. I assumed the rest of the media would pick up on it and say, you know what, it's great, you can do something. People has provided these numbers for you to call. That wasn't the reaction by the, by the media at all. It was, the reaction by the media was this. <gasps> People Magazine is taken aside, which was so shocking. And I just wanted to say, what side are you talking about? The side that says the dangerously mentally ill should maybe not be able to buy a gun? Or what the side that says a terrorist on, on the watch list should not be able to buy a gun? It was really shocking that we have somehow decided this is a two-sided issue. 93% of the people of our country want background checks, common sense. And somehow this tiny minority I have discovered has convinced everyone that any discussion about this issue says, is someone saying, we want to take away your guns? Mm -hmm. It's absolutely not the case. Jess, am I correct in remembering that you didn't even tell people or suggest what people should say if they called Congress. You just encouraged people to call Congress, and that was perceived as taking a side. <laughs> that was perceived as taking yeah. a side, absolutely. Yeah. And you know what? I wouldn't presume to tell people yeah. what to tell their representatives because there's no one solution. Right. You know? Right. It's, it's, you, we just want people to hold Congress's feet to the fire, and we also want reasonable voices to be heard because all they hear from. In, in Washington, too often, is this very small group of single-issue voters, and they are terrified of it. And I discovered the media is also terrified of that very small group. I think that, th I think that everybody should be much more afraid of 93% of the population who think that we must do something. And I, I, I think the tide is turning a little yeah, bit. Yeah, and, and Jay, that, I, I do want to point that out. That is precisely what's changing. It's precisely what Jess Cagle, Katie Couric, who we're also honoring tonight, um, has helped to change to make the voice of that overwhelming majority 90% plus of Americans, 90% of Republicans, more than 80% of gun owners, more than 70% of NRA members that support our policy goals around expanding background checks that could save lots of lives in our country. Um, at the time, and that, that, that tragedy at Umpqua Community College mm -hmm. really was when we started talking about this as a tipping point. And, uh, and this is genuine. When you did what you did in People Magazine, that was really almost proof point number one because we're able, we now have these mechanisms through what you're doing, through filmmakers, through social media to finally show what 90% support of the American public looks like. That's our goal all along, to show what that overwhelming support looks like. We put, after the tragedy in Orlando, we put 150,000 calls into Congress in 24 hours. 
that's for, for the first time we weren't outnumbered by those you know vociferous um, extremists on the other side. We outnumbered them, you know, probably 20, 30, 50 to 1 with 150,000 calls in the kit. So that's what's changing. It doesn't change overnight. You take two steps forward, you take one step back, but in the grand scheme of things, make no mistake, thanks to folks like Jess and a growing number of them out there, um, we are truly engaging the American public in this issue. So just want to lay a little hope on everybody out there Definitely. as well. You both said that you want to move away from the routine reaction that people have to these tragedies. How can the common person, our audience today, how can they get involved in being change makers in this space if this is something they passionately connect with? Yeah, uh, they should go to bradycampaign.org. Um, they should text enough to 877-877 when we ask them to, they should sign up for our text-to-call updates. And then when there's an important initiative introduced, a bill introduced, we will give you the information to be able to contact your congressperson or a congressperson that needs to hear from you. Um, and that's really what it's about. It's about you know us as individuals turning into a collective voice that's so loud that our elected leaders can no longer um, ignore. Totally. And for both of you, you're both at the forefront of this extremely, in one sense, divisive topic for so many different groups. And people necessarily don't want to find the common ground to have a discussion, the people on the opposite side. How, how are you managing to create those conversations? So, so can I just say, yeah. so, and this is one of the big misperceptions, and we need to just nip it in the bud. There's Congress, that you're absolutely right, they don't want to have that conversation because too many of our craven politicians are under the influence of the corporate gun lobby. This has nothing to do with making this a safer nation. This has to do for them with political expediency. Fortunately, a lot of that changed Tuesday night. Not all there, but we've demonstrated that the definition of political expediency is changing. Then there's what goes on in the American public. 93% support this, 6% mm -hmm. disagree, that's the same percentage of people who believe that the moon landing was a fake. No joke. These are really these, these, these are these are real posts. So that is the same yeah. as engaging somebody who in a in a, in a conversation about whether Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin actually landed on the moon, a conversation about whether you support background checks or not. So um, there's this misperception that we need to convince more people that we're right, that we need to, among us, the American public, have a more civil conversation. I've been across this country. I've been in small rural areas that were painted bright red Tuesday night. And what I've seen is that 93% support. So it's a question of elevating a um, constructive, positive dialogue that already exists more than it is a question of creating one. And bringing that dialogue and that voice to put pressure and hold Congress accountable. Jess, this wasn't your first time being an advocate. How have you found your voice to stand up for other people as well and to make a stand for what you believe in? I, I think that it's always, um, you know, I, I have always worked for magazines that are for everybody. They're not political magazines, whether it was Entertainment Weekly or People, um, Time, it worked for a while. But I, I always believe that you can do what's right. And you know what? You can, you can become paralyzed by making everyone happy, but you can also, particularly when you're the editor of a magazine, I think it's important, and it's, it's, it's almost even more necessary now because I think the audience expects it and wants it, but you have to let people know who you are. And I think if you, if you know you're on the side of the angels, right, and in, in the case of, of a, you know, let's, let's prevent gun violence, right? I know it's controversy, controversial to a small group of people, but that's the right thing to do. And it's from a, it, it's not like it's terribly brave. I think it only sounds brave because there is, as Dan was saying, this misperception of, two sides or you know a uh, whole lot of people out there in the country that don't want to prevent gun violence it's insane and so i think that one of the most important things to do just to follow up on what dan was saying is just hold congress's feet to the fire and say you are you are being bullied by a very small group of people and you know cowards succumb to bullies and don't be cowardly about this issue. And I think that we, though, have to put our money where our mouth is. We have to support those politicians who will stand up to those bullies. And we have to praise those politicians who will stand up to those bullies. And we have to keep yelling at those politicians until they stand up to those bullies. Unfortunately, the, the voice of the mass 
of the vast majority is much softer than that, the voices of that little tiny minority way too often. Jay, can I ask you a question? So you were reading comments before and they all sounded very positive and we're used to getting it. It didn't used to be the case because that small uh, group of extremists uh, have a way of being much louder than they actually are. Um, but I, I want to invite you if there are negative comments there, mm -hmm. um, insults, whatever it is, to, to, to share those as well because it gives us an opportunity to kind of put a put our finger on the pulse of the conversation out there. Definitely. Well, there aren't, there aren't many that I'm seeing right now, but as yeah. I'm sifting through, I'm seeing one here that I think may be an interesting one yeah. to answer. It says, uh, Mr. Gross, the Brady Center rates politicians on their stance on gun control, with a significant number of them failing. Do any have a passing grade? What will it take for the Brady Center to compete against the NRA? Yeah, a lot of them have a passing grade, um, and more have a passing grade than did a year ago, than did two years ago. Um, so we're heading in the right we're heading in the right direction. The fact is, there's still far too many. You know, these votes. We got things to a vote last year that nobody thought was going to see the light of day anytime soon, which is progress. But those votes still failed. A vote failed in the wake of the terrible tragedy after Sandy Hook. A vote failed. Again, a vote nobody thought was going to happen, but it still failed in the terrible tragedy um, at the uh, Pulse nightclub in, in, in Orlando. Um, those people <laughs> who were on the wrong side of this, every one of them deserves a failing grade, so a lot of them. But there are a lot of people who are leading the fight um, and who deserve, and more and more of them, very hearteningly, who deserve passing, pa passing grades. Um, we rate politicians based on two very simple criteria where you stand on background checks, because that's where the American public agrees. That's where we have the opportunity to have the biggest impact in terms of policy. Brady background checks have been extraordinarily effective. They should be done at gun shows and online, just like they're done at gun stores. Everybody agrees with that. That's why you have 93% support. So we rate them on, do you agree with that? If you're a senator, where did you vote on it? If you're a candidate, where do you stand on it? If you're a House member, have you supported the bill that we want you to support? Number two, do you take money from the corporate gun lobby? Um, and if you are against background checks and you take money from the corporate gun lobby, you're what we call a lapdog and you fail. Mm -hmm. And so it's plain, it's plain, it's plain yeah, and yeah. simple. Yeah. Yeah, extremely clear. Yeah. And both of you, I know you've got extremely busy schedules today. How important are the awards tonight? And actually talking about this really significant issue, especially this year, it just seems in, in a saddening way, it seems like this is such an important topic to be talking about this year. How important are the awards this evening? Well, the NRA played a part in the election, and, and we now have a, a person in the White House who has embraced the NRA. It, it didn't always, yep, yep. Um, completely, but I, I think that it's it it will it's a it's a good time for uh, it's a good time for people who are passionate about this issue to to come together and just remind everyone that we have to keep on working. And you know what? We are the majority. Mm -hmm. We are the majority, and we've got to be loud about that and no one should be more afraid of this little tiny group of people over here than they are afraid of us. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, that's, uh, that, that's what we're looking forward to. We're looking forward, I'm looking forward to honoring Jess and Katie Couric, two incredibly deserving honorees. But most of all, getting up there in front of all of our supporters, some of whom feel, many of whom feel very disheartened that the candidate that we supported for president that did so much to elevate this issue historically. Let's not forget that. Even though Secretary Clinton didn't win, she elevated. She was a presidential candidate who ran on this issue like nobody had before. Um, down the ballot, uh, that happened in historic proportions. An historic percentage of them won. Um, so, you know, this, this, this is happening, and there are a lot of positive things. And so I just, um, I look forward tonight to delivering that message that yes let's own the disappointment around the presidential election but let's also strengthen our resolve based on all the positive uh, stuff that we have have going for us and um, fight on because it's a fight that we're winning and we have to win. A massive thanks to Jess Cagle and Dan Gross for joining us today. I really hope that you have a fantastic evening. Thank you so much for being at the forefront of one of the most important issues of our time. And I really hope that all of you, those at home, are actually going to get behind this. If there's any last words you'd like to say, a tweet. Uh, uh, words of wisdom, Dan. Uh, listen, uh, all right. Hillary Clinton, at the end of her concession speech, uh, the candidate that we endorsed, the candidate that did so much, said, never stop believing that fighting for what's right is worth it. And there is nothing more right 
or more worth it than this cause. And that's why we have to fight on to make this the better, safer nation that we all want and deserve. Absolutely. Thank you all, guys. See you tomorrow. Thank you so much for tuning in.